tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Foliage. Oh, what you drinking? <laughs> Just my garbage juice. <laughs> Mama needs her garbage juice. Don't talk to me till I've had my second cup. <laughs> what actually haunts this cemetery is way worse than a werewolf or a grave that knocks back. Can you imagine stumbling upon a goth camping out in their hearse, just enjoying nature? I need a palate cleanser, even though we're not moving to anything else. <laughs> oh, I like that taste. It could stay in my mouth all day. IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome, new followers, viewers, and listeners. Thank you so, and longtime friends. Thanks so much for being here. We missed you. Hit the like and subscribe or whatever you got to do to let the algorithm know that you're uh, into Idaho Falls' longest running podcast dedicated exclusively to Idaho Falls. Really? <laughs> no one else has lasted more than a year doing this? Okay. Really? Wow. On tonight's episode, pumpkin spice. I'm sure that'll be in there somewhere. And everything nice. Hurricanes. <laughs> um, Blackfoot guy wins lots of money for being cool. Good for him. We're going to try the Dr. Pepper and Pickle thing. We'll see how that pans out. Is it bussin' or disgusting? That's yeah. the real question. And we'll talk <laughs> about the uh, BSU gothlete. I she's, love her. <laughs> she's gotten quite a bit of attention. Who's also, my favorite person? <laughs> the Rocky Mountain Horror Show featuring some nice snacks, mm -hmm. scary movies, and Rose Hill Cemetery. Babe, what's wrong? You don't like pumpkin spice, wartime, election, eclipse, hurricane season? <sighs> I mean, I like one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> the war. Just kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. I like pew, the pumpkin spice. <laughs> no, I like the pumpkin spice. Obviously, I'm white. <laughs> oh, man. And our thoughts are with our brothers and sisters in mm -hmm. Florida. Yeah. After Milton, I guess it's been a weird hurricane season. Right, right. It's been really bad. Scientists say it's the weirdest they've ever seen. Forecasters predicted a busy Atlantic hurricane season, but they mm -hmm. weren't prepared for this. Barrel wow. became the earliest storm on record to reach Cat 5 status. Mm -hmm. Then from August 20th to September 23rd, the traditional start of peak hurricane season, mm -hmm. nothing. Dead Weird. quiet. Okay. Yeah. Then five hurricanes popped up between September 26th and October 6th, more than double the old record of two. Huh. So okay. they, yeah, they keep track of this in a myriad of different ways. Mm -hmm. There were three hurricanes in October at the same time. Never happened before. Mm -hmm. Hurricane Milton, of course, went from a tropical storm to a cat category five hurricane. And have you heard that they're doing like FEMA is in fact, I think mm -hmm. FEMA is the one who identified this 20 years ago. The Waffle House Index? Oh, yeah, I have I have heard of this. You've heard of smothered uh -huh. and covered like Waffle House hash browns. Yeah. <laughs> Second Bloodhound Gang reference in two episodes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, right. And um, apparently, if the Waffle House in the soon-to-be hurricane-ravaged area stays open, it's not going to be so bad. Right. If they close... Batten down the hatches, people. Right, yeah. Crazy. I totally man. heard that before. Yeah. Uh, you know, I also heard during pandemic times, apparently there were a bunch of 24-hour places that had never closed down before. And so they had to, like, write a whole bunch of SOPs on how to close down the restaurant because they'd never closed it. And, like, I think it was Denny's mostly. And they had okay. to, like, either Denny's or IHOP or something like that, one of those. Uh, but they had to go and replace, like, half of the store's locks because none of them had keys. Wild. Yeah. And and we still haven't recovered from that. Mm -hmm. Looking at you, Walmart. Yeah. Here in Idaho Falls. Ah, oh, jeez We used to have a 24-hour Walmart, and now? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah, now we have to be there and out by 11. I'm seeing fewer and fewer that. businesses use the pandemic as an excuse, though. Right. It's been four freaking years. Well, and realistically, I can't imagine that their sales were worth keeping the store open 24-7. I wonder, in little you know? old Idaho Falls, Idaho. Yeah. Thank goodness for the McDonald's on hit. That's open right. 24 hours. Right. That's true. There, There's always a few. I think uh, Los Albertos is too, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if they yes. ever even closed down. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Los Albertos is like one of my go-tos. I love that place. Carne asada fries. Oh, always with just tons of lime and the red salsa. Uh -huh. Only the red. And it's you got to have all of those or else it's not worth eating. Yeah. You know, like, don't get me wrong. They're great without them, but they're incredible with them i sent yeah. carly a meme this week because we've been known to send memes to one another <laughs> here and there frequently and it was the guy squeezing a lime on completely yeah things like tacos and tortilla chips yeah, <laughs> to squeeze lime on mm -hmm. and then 
it ended up like he ends up squeezing a lime over a bowl of limes and uh-huh. it just gets ridiculous. And I think even a door hinge at one point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carly may like her lime. I love lime. <laughs> Straight to the comments and follow ups. Let's do it. Let's do it. Big news last week. And mm-hmm. boy, did we call it. We said on our episode that we recorded Saturday night in between general conferences, Mm -hmm. uh, we said, we hear a news organization is going to release a story soon. So that published at 1234 a.m. on Monday, like it always Uh does. Right. Most of the time does. About the aquarium? Yeah. At 1134 Monday. So, you know, almost uh, we were 12 hours ahead of that. (laughs) How do we do it? How do we do it? They've got an insider, guys. <laughs> Which one of you is it? We just Which keep... one of you five people is it? <laughs> we just keep our eyes open. That's it. That's it. Just keep our ears to the yeah, ground. Yeah, let's not get someone fired. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. But Aaron Ferris, the executive director of the East Idaho Aquarium. Yeah. So let you, last episode, if you missed it, we talked about PETA's complaint about the aquarium mm-hmm. and how a whistleblower has said thousands of animals have died in... Just a couple of years mm-hmm. or three years. Um, Aaron Ferris had this heartfelt post apologizing for shortcomings, talking about the need for a new facility, inviting people to reach out to him with questions, comments, and concerns. He did what he had to do. Right. And I thought it, he did a pretty good job. The comments weren't so kind. A few sure. people saying, he's said this before, and will things ever change? Well, and that's the thing. I mean, based on my insider People, like his employees have been saying this. It's not like it's new information. You talked about an insider who worked there before 2019. Yeah. So over five years ago. Right. And basically he knows that this was brought to his attention and nothing changed. So I have a saying that I like to follow. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it before. It's kind of common. It's like, um, uh, let's see here. Apologizing. Apology without a change in behavior is just manipulation. Thank you. One of my faves. Wow. Not a that plus. I've ever known anybody like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It is. It yeah. is. Like, here's the thing. You can apologize, but unless you take at least some steps to change it, you probably don't really mean it, do you? Well, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt. It's a new day. And at what point do we go, hey, at what point do we do a check-in or a follow-up and go, how's everything? Right. You know, I, I think he did have some solid stats, like they've reduced the number of deaths by 73% over the course of meh. I don't, which is pretty good. I don't and I will say, okay, here's a step they took. They added that second uh, door to the birdcage so that you, when you open it, they don't just fly out and get into the aquarium everywhere. That's solid improvement. Mm-hmm. That is them actively taking a step to make sure that animals don't die. I'll take that. Sure. Uh, and then we got a nice little email from PETA. We did, which <laughs> was a little bit jarring. It I was. I mean, I wouldn't think that they'd bother with us. Right. <laughs> but we got it. Let's see. We got it around 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Again, our show publishes around midnight on Monday. I was impressed by how quick they got it out. So 36 hours later, if mm-hmm. that, we got an email. And and honestly, it was it was professional yeah it was i think there was one passive aggressive statement in it yeah but it was some dude from utah Mm because he had an 801 number inviting me to call him Mm -hmm. and i just thought okay yeah they they must they must scour the internet for those keywords i'm gonna assume that they've got some kind of google alert where when something is posted mentioning them they get it yeah you know and then I wonder if they just send it to the person who's like over that region. I don't know. <laughs> but the guy, I mean, the guy definitely researched us a little bit because mm-hmm. he didn't just talk about our segment last episode, mm-hmm. but even the episode before that. Right. Where we featured Yellowstone Bear World. So yeah. I thought that was interesting. Thank you for the letter. And, you know, we're probably going to say what we're going to say. I'm still pro zoo, pro aquarium. Right. Because I believe, like I mentioned last episode, that. They're educational, and I think they're inspirational in terms Mm -hmm. of inspiring people to want to preserve these animals and their habitat. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, let's talk purely, you know, perfection. Like, 
if the world was a perfect place and we yeah. didn't have to have zoos and they got to live in their natural habitats and there was never an opportunity or a necessity for an animal to be held captive because it just couldn't survive in the wild, that would be great. We don't live in that world, though. We don't. You know? Um, as far as PETA goes and stuff, I'm sure that they have done some good. You know, I, I know that there have been at least some campaigns that have probably been effective to some people. And at the end of the day, I do want animals to be treated ethically. I also recognize that we don't live in a world where that can necessarily happen as easily as people want it to. And I don't think that they always use the most ethical means to spread their message. And that's our opinion here on this show, which is mm -hmm. Idaho Falls infotainment opinion mm -hmm. and bad jokes. Yep. All right. Uh, another follow up. Little did I know about General Conference, small little fact that I overlooked last weekend, mm -hmm. or last week after General Conference two weekends ago, the voice of the semi-annual, it's, it's the annual in April, the semi-annual in October, mm -hmm. the voice on the TV was none other than a gentleman by the name of Dale Spaulding. Oh, yeah? Who I worked with at Z103. Oh, funny. He was a Brad hire. Oh, nice. And I well, remember- Well, he's got to be good if Brad liked him. Uh-huh. Yeah. I remember distinctly Brad called me into my office, into his office, and said, dude, listen to this dude. And I listened to what I thought was a movie trailer. Just a kind of voice <laughs> like this. I can't even do it. Uh-huh. Because this guy has a great voice. Nice. He was like, I don't want to get my facts wrong. He was 17, 18, 19, something like that. I think oh, he was wow. still in high school. I mean, he looked really young in the picture I saw of him, too. Yeah. And I mean, that had to have been several years ago. And and I don't think he, you know, we immediately, <laughs> I said, go for it, dude. I think Brad hired him and, you uh -huh. know, trained him. And he was on Z103 for a year or two, if my mm -hmm. memory serves. But he wasn't, I don't know if he was a radio guy so much as he was a voiceover guy. Right, He right. just wanted to be behind the mic, hugging and loving those words. And I love he that. just nailed it. Dale, wow, buddy. Uh -huh. It's crazy. And it's kind of crazy. A few talented people have come through mm -hmm. the Z103 studi studios in particular mm -hmm. since I, you know, was there for, I'm not going to say how long I was there. Yeah, you were there for a hot minute. It'll date me <laughs> considerably. But um, yeah, we had a guy in the um, early 2000s by the name of Shay Carl. Mm -hmm. He went on to do the Shay Tards YouTube channel. Oh. And then uh, he moved his whole family to California. Oh, wow. Okay. Started a company to help other YouTubers make YouTube videos. Oh, wow. Okay. I think he was one of the first in the country to use the term vlogging. Interesting. For video okay. blogging. Mm hmm Anyway, started Maker Studios. Less than five years later, sold it to Disney, I think for $500 million. His Jeez. cut was $35 million. <laughs> He's currently the owner of um, the entire Pebble Creek Ski Area Mountain. Oh, my gosh. In Pocatello. Okay. To be fair, though, if I would if I would have sold something to Disney, one of my stipulations would be, also, I get to be part of Club 33 forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly, he got that in his compensation package, right, buddy? If you're smart, <laughs> yeah. he actually not saying he's not smart. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and and here's what's funny, and I want this to be be an inspirational message to kids. Mm -hmm. We had a consultant at the time, not our choice. Management made us have a consultant for this radio station, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we had to send tapes, MP3s at that point, right. of uh, the jocks, the DJs on the station. And he would evaluate them. And he said, this Shay Carl guy, he sounds like a blender with the lid off. <laughs> and, I, and I said, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're absolutely right. And I turned to Brad and Brad was like, yep, he does. And I want him to keep doing it. Fair enough. And our consultant was like, oh, small town amateurs, whatever. <laughs> anyway, but so maybe Shay wasn't the best radio guy, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you can't be successful. Right. What's right. the Einstein quote? If you judge a fish by, by its ability it to climb a tree, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, right. You're going to think that fish is a POS. <laughs> but. I think that's exactly how that went. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe, you know, let that be an inspirational message to us all. Mm -hmm. If we're in a field or working for a company that doesn't value you, you know, go right. to where you're celebrated, not where you're just tolerated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I completely agree with that. Or make your own little place like this here. <laughs> yeah. 
on a, late on a Saturday night, a weekend night. Okay, so way to go, Dale Spaulding. Um, back to Dasani sucking so much. <laughs> Remember last episode we talked, Drea, I'm so sorry. We have to do this though. Because Kevin said, oh, remember the Saturday Night Live bit? And I said, no, which one? <laughs> I guess during the pandemic, four uh -huh. years ago, this video is four years old on YouTube. They, they had a, a parody ad for a, a mythical grocery store called Bartonson's. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how they were out of a lot of things and showing right. their bare shelves. Mm -hmm. But they said, we do have some other stuff like mint Pringles, <laughs> wine from Missouri, Frozen Hawaiian pizza. Impossible lobster, <laughs> fluoride bananas, and Dasani. <laughs> Aw. What's wrong with it? It's water. I, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> oh, man. That was funny. I mean, I do remember the pictures circulating on the internet of the stacks of Dasani next to the completely empty shelves of other water. I almost wonder if I'd rather go thirsty. Oh, stop. But they had uh, Pepto-Bismol. I don't like Dasani. It's fine. <laughs> Pepto-Bismol Oreos, Peeps Soup, <laughs> and of course, Dasani. <laughs> the message there being that at least a bunch of writers at Saturday Night Live agree, Dasani sucks. <laughs> okay. You know, here's the thing. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> Leave it to me to double down on an unpopular opinion. Realistically, I just... I don't care that much about what water I get. I'm not a water snob. Like you, you could hand me a Dasani, you could hand me a Fiji, you could hand me a Smart Water. I'm going to be happy no matter what. All I need is water, you know. Like <laughs> as I'm just long as thirsty. it's cold, yeah. like you said last episode. Yes, that's all I yeah. need. Yeah. yeah. If you hand me a lukewarm anything, I'm going to say no. Unfortunately for me, Dasani is in so many places, right? That I have had to, I have been forced to drink. So I guess I would, right? Not go thirsty. Yeah. If Dasani were the only option. <laughs> you do value right. your water, mm -hmm. so. Speaking of disgusting beverages, <laughs> you want to get right to it? Okay. First of all, anything with pickle juice in it is probably just fine. <laughs> it's all the rage with kids this past week on the Tiki Takis. I mean, it's kind of like that whole watermelon and mustard thing. Mm -hmm. Sounds dis yeah. disgusting. Is delicious. It was pretty good. Yeah. Let's find out. And I'm just like, I just can see the the flavor profiles matching. This gal on TikTok yeah. went to Sonic in order to Dr. Pepper with pickles. Come to find mm -hmm. out, it's a, called a Dr. Pucker. I oh. would call it a Dr. Pecker. <laughs> of course you would. But whatever. <laughs> I say first, and of course we have only the finest pickles in existence <laughs> here in the IFAF test kitchen. We have Clausen sandwich mm -hmm. slices. Oh no, halves are fine. Quarters of, no. No. Sandwich slices. Yeah. Why? Because they're so easy to mince into um, mm -hmm. a tuna salad. Yep. They obviously go great on sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, when the pickles are thinly sliced as sandwich slices and rest on the shelves in mm -hmm. the, you know, Clausen is always refrigerated. Right. Um, and they sit in that vinegar. They get more crispy. Right. All the way through. You know that mm -hmm. mushy middle part of the pickle? Which I love personally. These don't have that <laughs> issue. Right. The other thing I like about these is that they're a perfect vehicle for sauce. Yes. You can you know? dip the pickle late night snack. Right. Put some. Well, and some, like if you have like the quartered pickles and stuff, those don't always work for sauce because they're usually like too, like there's too much moisture on them. They're slippery. Yeah, they're slippery. And so the it'll sauce just, sli just slides slide right, right off. off. So this is perfect because then you can squeeze the sauce directly onto it one by one. So let's, I say we put the pickles in the glass first. You want pickles first? Yeah. Okay. And then the Dr. Pepper. Now, are we wanting to do it cocktail style where we have a pickle sticking out of it and do a little juice too? I'm thinking a little juice too. Okay. I think two slices per glass. Wow. Two, be, you want to go baller. That's what I, I'm thinking. Yeah, we just do it. Okay. Do you mind if I use my hands? Do? Oh yeah, okay. of course. <laughs> okay. They're clean. You know me. I insist. <laughs> I mean, realistically, is it even a pickle jar if it hasn't had a flange or two in it? <laughs> yeah. A couple of digits. Yeah, right. All right. I'm going to do a nice little splash. Nice. I like mine pretty. And I'll do the same. Okay. Oh, you were going to do it for me. That's very yeah. sweet. Okay. Yeah, I'll be your little cocktail waitress. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Can I have a Dr. Pucker? <laughs> <laughs> the airline peanuts taste funny. <laughs> it is Sober October. We're celebrating Sober October. We are. Yeah. Yeah, which has actually been really nice. It's been a good break. A couple of Clausens. Gross. I'm going to pour in the Dr. Pepper first. Okay, do it. We're doing Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Yeah. 
Got to keep them cows low. Just because my years of being my grandpa's bartender <laughs> taught me, you put the um, you put the st- you put the mixer in first, then you mm-hmm. put the stank on it because right. the stank will sink down. Right. All right. I want to pour mine over my pickles a little bit to get more of that flavor. Okay. That flav. Now I flavor, saw. Flav. <laughs> now I saw this in a, yeah, a, a TikTok with I think Dua Lipa. Yes. <laughs> and one of the comments was something like, why do all of the prettiest girls eat like trash raccoons? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's so funny. <laughs> and okay. And she plussed it. Mm-hmm. She plussed it by doing pickles and jalapenos. Yes. Which we also have. I'm actually kind of excited to toss a little of that in there. So I think let's, that'll be good. Let's try the Ooh, pickle. My mouth is watering a little. First, ready? Here okay. we go. And I did mine. I think I did mine a little extra pickly, so. Whoa. Ratio was way off. Hang on. Meaning I put too much pickle juice in. See, I don't think, I feel like I didn't put enough in. Here. Go for it. Yeah, let me. Okay, I got a little bit more that time. Hmm. Now, Dr. Pepper already has a depth to it that a lot of colas do not. Right. I guess a lot of colas meaning Coke or Pepsi. It's got that extra spiced rum flavor right do you count root beer as a cola i guess it's a thing all its own right kind of beer yeah yeah but it's got that depth that root beer has oh that's nice yep it needed that extra pickle Ooh, i i kind of dig this then the pickle adds some depth too doesn't mm-hmm. it it does i bet isn't that fancy I bet electrolytes wise, this is great for you. Mm. <laughs> you know? Probably. Yeah. Some well, in this case, zero sugar, so never mind. But with a normal one, that's a sports drink. <laughs> we need to have Dr. Pepper with our pickle pizza, our pizzle mm. from Lucy's Pizza. That's exactly what we need to yeah. do. Do we need to have a a pickle feast? I think we might need to have a pickle feast. We need a pickle fest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. I think this is pretty good. We say McDonald's, but ba da 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 da. I'm loving it. Now that being said, should we go ahead and toss one or two of these bad boys? Let's in? plus it with the panos. Plus it with the panos. <laughs> Bottoms up. I mean, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think I'd like it more with the jalapenos, but I definitely do. You know, if you were to. I mean, if you were to describe this to anybody, we're going to try Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm with you so far. Yeah. With pickles. Whoa. Right. Okay. And jalapenos. Whoa, whoa. (laughs) And like, how much shit could we keep Mm -hmm. adding to this beverage before we hit a point of diminishing return (laughs) or negative return? At this point, I'm wondering if if we should throw a little mustard in there too. I'm wondering about maraschino cherries up in this. Oh, Oh. Now that we've gotten gone sour and Oh, is that pickly, too nasty? We... I almost like it. <laughs> That's actually kind of a good idea. It sounds now, dirty. I kind of wonder if you could achieve this same flavor profile with a little bit of like chili powder and vinegar. Right. The one thing I don't like is that if you use the liquid in the can, you're going to use that up before you use all of the stuff in the can. Yeah. You, you know? don't want to do that. Yeah. I almost feel like what we need to do is hop on Amazon and buy a gallon of that pickle juice that I love. You do love those little pickle juice Ooh, shots. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I genuinely will just sip on those sometimes. Like if I want a snack, I don't really want a snack. I just want flavor. I think, and those things are amazing. I oh, think it's so because good. you're not drinking enough water. No, I know it is. And that helps to hydrate you. I need a palate cleanser, even though we're not moving to anything <laughs> else. I just need to kind of get that taste out. Oh, I like that taste. It could stay in my mouth all day. <laughs> I'm just going to be walking around with a tumbler full of this stuff. (laughs) Just garbage juice. Oh, what you drinking? Yeah. (laughs) Just my garbage juice. (laughs) Mama needs her garbage juice. Don't talk to me till I've had my second cup. (laughs) All right. (laughs) We want to to shout out Brad Grossbeck of Blackfoot. Mm -hmm. 53 years old, appeared on the reality show Forged in Fire on the History Channel. Or History. Oh, that sounds super cool. Forged in fire. Ever heard of the show? Uh, is it guys making knives and stuff? Basically. I, I think I have seen an... I think I watched part of an episode that my dad was watching once when I went over for Sunday dinner. Okay. Yeah. 
Never heard of it. Uh-huh. Um, there's 10 seasons of it. Holy crap. So, <laughs> well, people love So that, this is though. a hot show. Yeah. People like to watch things go into fire one way and come out another way. I get it. <laughs> Brad, with a couple of guys from Hurricane, Utah. Looks like hurricane. Pronounced hurricane. Mm-hmm. You see a sign for it on your way to Vegas. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, St. George. <laughs> when you're visiting the temple down there. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and uh, they, yeah, they won. They made a... Um, hey, Vegas has a temple too. Yes, they do. <laughs> They made a ballista. It's a weapon used in ancient Rome to launch stones, spears, oh, arrows, and other objects. That's super cool. So it's been exactly 10 seconds since we thought about the <laughs> Roman Empire. <laughs> Funny, I like it. I was on the treadmill today and I watched like ancient top 10 and learned all about <laughs> like the Roman Empire, you know, mm-hmm. because it was top 10 sieges. Right. There was Masada. And the siege of Syracuse, mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. you've seen the last Indiana Jones movie mm-hmm. anyway. Ah, oh, that's so good. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm just still on my garbage juice. <laughs> way to go, Brad. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, 21 finger gun salute, pew, pew. and chef's kiss to you. And the fine blacksmithery. Mm-hmm. So those three guys split the $20,000 prize, which ends up being $6,666 <laughs> a piece. Hey, kind of perfect for spooky season. It kind of is, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? All yeah. right. Yeah, I'm sure that the History Channel Abacus Department is <laughs> counting out the uh, checks. I, I think he won like last June, actually. Oh, really? But you got to keep it a secret until the show airs. Right, right. That must have been rough. <laughs> right, yeah. Anyway, it looks like fall has finally hit East Idaho or is going to this week mm-hmm. on Thursday. We've had 70s and 80s through September. I mean, there's a couple of rainy days. Right, yeah. It looks like it's about to get chilly. It is. Uh, Wednesday, 72. Thursday's high, 52. Man, that's a pretty big jump. We all know what that means. It's uh, cuffing season, Mm -hmm. sweater weather, Mm -hmm. um, gray sweatpants season. Mm -hmm. All the girls look forward to that. (laughs) Or I guess look down to that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um, and we, we did see, let's get to the foil- foliage. Boy, old habits die hard. I used to think the word was foliage as a oh, kid. Oh, I could see why, though. I think even adults, some adults I knew said foliage. Look yeah. at that beautiful foliage. <laughs> yeah, which doesn't sound nearly as nice as foliage. We did see some beautiful fall <clears throat> foliage last week. Snake mm-hmm. River Landing mm-hmm. um, by the waterfront. Okay, so Snake River Parkway is the road that sort of gently curves between Sunnyside and Snake River Landing. You could say that it's kind of snake-shaped? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they did that on purpose. (laughs) And then the street that runs perpendicular, kind of in the middle, is Event Center Drive. Right. You head east to get to the waterfront. Mm -hmm. You head west to get to the Mac. Yeah. If you head east, and I just literally parked thinking, oh, there's got to be some some fun shots around here somewhere. Oh, the Life in Idaho Falls Facebook group Mm -hmm. was having a cover photo (laughs) contest. So I just parked the car on the sidewalk and I looked out my window and I was like, that's it. Right. (laughs) There's this, look at this. There's this beautiful two rows of trees on this sort of stream Mm -hmm. leading to the big pond in the middle of the Snake River Landing waterfront area Mm -hmm. with fountains. Super fun. There it is looking back toward my car. Just beautiful fall colors right now. And we also saw some at Rose Hill Cemetery, which we'll get to later part of our little spooky spot of the show i guess rocky yeah. mountain horror show <laughs> i'm so excited to talk about that so it's there if you know where to look oh is it still by the time this episode airs all of the fall may have fall- i predict all of on the thursday fall may have fallen yeah <laughs> i predict on thursday it'll really fall look i will say all i want is a warm enough halloween to go out and have a good time yeah i don't want to be freezing my butt off just to like go out and enjoy myself I you remember know? having to wear a winter coat over my Halloween costume. Same. And I hated it. And I yeah. just don't want the kids to have to do that this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I'm really wanting to hand out full-size candy bars. So mm. I don't want them to be like shaking on my doorstep as I give them candy. And, and speaking of, if you do need a warm-up, the Give Back Soup Shack yes. has reopened for the season. I know. I'm so excited. They're in that little sort of food truck area in mm-hmm. front of what used to be Planet Doom or kind of next to Bolero on First mm-hmm. Street. And a portion of their proceeds goes to a charity each month. Mm-hmm. That's so they, really cool. they cycle through different ones, which I think is the coolest part, too. You can get a soup and Sammy and have a little mm-hmm. lunch in your car. Oh, they've got some good, like they do Take a really good sandwich, too. Mm-hmm. And they got yeah. some good desserts as well. Oh, do they I just put their the menu up. Ooh, yeah. well, I guess we got to go. Uh-huh. <laughs>
Hey, you deserve the best, don't you? Especially when it comes to treating yourself, you deserve Thor's chocolate. The best artisan chocolate in East Idaho. It's beyond anything you've tasted before with bold, smooth, delicious flavors, dark milk and white chocolates with a few keto friendly options as well. Made from bean to the bar in Idaho Falls, Idaho, Thor'sChocolate.com. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 25% on your first purchase. Thor's Chocolate. Fit for the gods. Do you want locally raised beef for your holidays or to feed your family through the winter? Right now, Virgin River Land and Cattle Company is offering 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. For your own farm-to-table experience, find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. And coming soon, win front row tickets to a Spud Kings hockey game. Selling your home this fall, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Along with my partner, Carly Morgan, I help Idaho buy, sell, and invest in real estate. Yes, even in the fall. You know we have insight on the Idaho Falls community, and we know the current real estate market too. Plus, we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. When it's time to sell your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Lincoln Post. Go thrifting for your new fall looks at Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, save on fabulous fall fashions, including sweaters, hoodies, cardigans, layering tops, denim, boots, and sneakers. Elsie's Closet. Look for the pink sign off Yellowstone on A Street. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Idaho Falls Fiber has one local internet service provider, and that's QuickNet, qwk.net. Right now, get QuickNet's crazy fast 250 service for $37 a month, or their crazy fast gig service for $49 a month. Unlimited data, no setup fee, no term contract, net neutrality, and hometown friendly support. For Idaho Falls Fiber, it's QuickNet. That's a qwk.net. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first three months. Get a jump on holiday shopping for your out-of-town family or friends. Here's a gift-giving idea. Send them a unique, homegrown, hometown tee from Teton T-shirts. Including these cool vintage versions of the Civic Auditorium, the West Bank, and the Water Tower, our famous potato sack design, and the classic IHAR IFT. Check out TetonT-shirts.com, link in post. These exclusive designs are not available in gift shops. TetonT-shirts.com, wear a real piece of Idaho Falls. It seems like everybody's talking about Boise State women's beach volleyball player. Nora. Nora Hayde. I love Nora. She's so cool. You're going to love this even more. (laughs) Yeah. Her real name is Eleanor. Oh, I love the name Eleanor. That's so cute. (laughs) You like those older traditional names? I like old lady. Oh, yeah. I like old lady names. Edith. Mm, Oh, I think Edith is cute. Uh Yeah, Yeah. Those are great. (laughs) <laughs> so let's play a fun, exciting game of one of these things is not like the other if you're watching on YouTube. Oh, there's Charlie and Avery and Addison and Maya. Allison and Charlie and Michaela and Addison again. There's Eris and Angelina and Nora and Ava. So there's Nora. <laughs> I, I think you probably got what's different about her. Yeah. They're, she's unapologetic is what's different about her. They're she called, doesn't conform, man. Yeah. And that, I love that about her. I know. I think she's so cool. <laughs> They're calling her a goth athlete. Uh-huh. Or a gothlete. Yes. I yeah. love the portmanteau. <laughs> right. <laughs> she just, okay, if if you're not watching, let me describe her to you. She First of all, I think she's 6'1 or 6'2". Oh, wow. So she's a tall girl. Yeah, she's from oh Seattle, where there's no shortage of alternative fashion choices. Oh, I love that, though. I think she's 19. Uh-huh. And I think that she actually toned her look down a bit for, really? for this photo. Yeah. In this photo, she's uh, in her team photo mm-hmm. on the BSU website. Mm-hmm. She's got white foundation. Mm-hmm. I'm with you so far in terms of makeup. Red and black hair, still there. Uh-huh. Nose ring. Okay, uh-huh. this is where it gets kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, nostril piercings. So she's got a septum piercing. Uh huh. Septum and no- piercing. And, and then nostril, nostril piercings. piercings with a chain that uh-huh. goes across the bridge of her nose. Mm-hmm. Then she has eyebrow bars. And she's got these little decorative eyeliner dots around her eyes yes. that are really cute. Yeah. She looks badass. She looks so cool. Honestly, I would be terrified to play against her. Right, right. And like you said, I love that, you know, 
all of the other ladies, Charlie, Avery, Addison, Maya, Allison, Charlie, Michaela, etc. Uh-huh. You know, they all kind of have the same look. They've got a traditional look, yeah. And Nora's not afraid to stand out. Yeah, I think that's cool, too. Especially with something like beach volleyball, yeah. where you hear that and you sort of expect a very specific type of person. Yeah. You know, I like that she breaks the mold. I think that's super cool. Now, Nora, Nora, if I can, I do have one tip for you. As a ginge who gets sunburnt all the time, now I recognize that playing beach volleyball, you're probably going to be in the sun a lot. If you want to maintain the like really pale aesthetic... Totally cool. If you don't, don't it doesn't matter I to think me she either does. way. But if you do, uh, Neutrogena 100 plus SPF is where it's at, babes. <laughs> they make a spray on kind. It is the tits. <laughs> Road tip life hack. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody sent me her Instagram and I checked it out. Oh, yeah? It's kind of fun to see her progression from <laughs> finger quotes normal <laughs> to goth late. Uh-huh. So here's a few early pictures. We'll just show them. You can kind of see... When she hits that white foundation look that mm-hmm. she likes so much. Mm-hmm. She's got some animals in her photos, horsies. Oh, I love that. And then you, yeah. And then you finally see her as she is now with her cute little doggo. That's also part of her Instagram profile pic. Mm-hmm. Like every goth I've ever met is always the nicest person. Yeah. You know, like they always like love their animals. They're always super sweet. I think part of it is that they know what it's like to feel mis- like misunderstood and like judged. So they don't do that with the critters. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know we have a local resident goth YouTuber. Man, I forget her name. We do? I want to say Maddie Danger. Does that sound that is familiar? That's a super cool name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen her on YouTube a couple of times mm-hmm. in my travels. I know a gal around here that actually drives around a hearse. But she actually seems super nice. You do? I do. Really? Yeah. You know what's funny is that I saw... So one day I just saw a hearse driving around town and I was like, I bet that belongs to some really cool goth chick. And then one day I saw her getting out of the hearse, realized I kind of sort of knew her. Like we'd passed... We'd crossed paths a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's exactly who I would have thought owned that car. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, I know a dude about my age who drives, who has a <laughs> hearse and breaks it out around Halloween, especially. Yeah, it seems honestly But, but that fun. seems, you know, that seems right up, you know, yeah, a, right a up. middle-aged guy's alley. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. I wonder true. what the gas mileage is on a hearse. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Plus, you are carrying around a lot of empty space. Yeah. You know? Although I have seen some people who will turn the back into like a little sleeping area, mm-hmm. and they'll have like little bat plushies and stuff. It's very cute. <laughs> yeah. Put some badass tires on there and take it up to the woods, do a little yeah. camping. Right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I think that'd be fun. Can you imagine stumbling upon a goth camping out in their hearse? <laughs> <laughs> that would just be something. Like, just enjoying nature. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to the camping spot a mile over. <laughs> you have fun. I'm kidding. They're just there to see some bats. Some of my best friends were goths. Mm-hmm. I, I then mean, they had to I grow up and get a real job, but <laughs> hopefully, Nora, you won't have to. There's a hot minute in middle school where I wasn't really... I didn't really go full goth because I was afraid of being rejected by my peers, but mm-hmm. I wore a lot of black and I definitely stuck to that. Well, and can we describe your outfit? Oh, yes. This is fairly gothy. It is a little. Is there so, a way you can show off your leggings I without? Can... Uh... How about that? <laughs> Perfect. Maybe. Maybe you'll get that in the frame. You'll at least see my knee here. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Um, You've got the, in fact, you wore this for a Halloween episode last year as well. I I just love this. I only get to break it out seasonally. Mm -hmm. So when I do get to break it out, I absolutely take advantage of that. Um, But yeah, this is a little smack parlor set that I bought back when I was working in retail. It happened to be in the shop and it happened to go on sale. So of course I had to get it. It's Uh, it's got that black and white and purple mm -hmm. sort of spider web sort of look. Yes. Yeah. And I love that the top is sheer. Mm -hmm. So you can either wear just a bra underneath it or you can wear like a full-on tank top full-on t-shirt whatever you feel like yeah i decided to you know go for it because i like to uh, keep things cool i am wearing purple and green <laughs> because yeah. it was the wackiest halloween combo i could think of and mm-hmm. very jokery too. yeah we're sort of paying our respects to the dead on delivery joker <laughs> sequel yeah uh, it's only 33 percent of rotten tomatoes but then again what do they know I rarely, if ever, let that influence my movie watching choices. And it's a musical with Lady Gaga, so I still want to see it. I don't hate the musical aspect of it. I yeah. just, here's the thing having not seen it, so obviously I'm talking completely out of my ass right mm-hmm. now. Okay. But I don't feel like it makes sense to Arthur Fleck's character 
for him to be able to get a girlfriend, especially one who's like obsessed with him. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually had a friend who sort of posed this um, alternative scenario that I think would have played a lot better where basically the roles of Harley Quinn and Joker were sort of reversed where she was the one who was sort of in power in the relationship and he was very subservient to her. Well, they've, yeah, they've reimagined the Marvel and DC universes right. both several times. Why right. not have that happen? Well, and I just think for the character of Arthur Fleck specifically as the Joker, that would make a lot more sense because he, the entire first movie, he's under his mom's thumb until the very end when he decides to break out of that. So how easy would that be for his character to fall back into that? For him to be dominated by another- pseudo mommy. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And not only that, but also he's like- so obviously awkward and weird around women. I don't think that he has the charisma. He doesn't have the riz to go out and get <laughs> Lady Gaga and have her be obsessed with him. Right. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah. yeah, I see that. I, yeah. Now, is that a spoiler alert? Like, are we giving away part of the plot? Do we know? Well, that no, because I don't know she, any of it. Okay. No, so Do we that's know he was, romance? He's the one who romances her? Maybe she nope. romances him. <laughs> nope. But, right. but based on some, like, I've seen a little bit of the trailer and she seems like she's sort of adoring of him in them. And that's why I'm kind of like, mm, this don't track. Okay. You know? And now it's time for the Rocky Mountain Horror Show. <laughs> 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 Love the cheesy intro. It's so fun. I think it just keeps things fresh. We got the question, hey, what are we trick-or-treating this year? I don't know. How about Thursday, October 31st? That's when I would. <laughs> that makes the most sense to me. When we have it's 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 a fair question because mm -hmm. when we have the fourth of July on a Sunday mm -hmm. or Halloween on a Sunday in this area, people do have to wonder. Right, right. But for this Halloween. Thursday, October 31st. That's when we're doing it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. That being said, I do think that if Halloween falls on a Thursday or a Monday or something like that, the next day of school should have to be off. Yeah. You know? Right? Like, don't put teachers through the cracked out, candy riddled <laughs> BS that those kids are going to be throwing at them. I mean, they have to <laughs> most Halloweens, right? Well, yeah, but that's should what I'm saying. They, uh, they don't get paid enough to have to deal with that. They don't get paid enough. I mean, that too. <laughs> yeah. Let's fix that. <laughs> also, is this really going to happen? Have we seen that in some... Is this real life or is this just fantasy, Photoshop, <laughs> AI, that some spirit Halloweens in some markets are doing a little market test uh -huh. to see if the market will support spirit Halloween turning into spirit Christmas? It kind of makes sense, though. Just like we were talking, I think, last week mm -hmm. about how, say, the Haunted River in Manan becomes mm -hmm. the Christmas River. Right. Instead of getting four to six weeks of action, mm -hmm. why not get two, three months? Yeah. It makes total sense to me. We should just call it Q4 Entertainment stuff. <laughs> right, Shop. right. You could call it Spirit Holidays. There you go. Yeah. I actually like Spirit of Christmas. Make the of really small. There we go. Yeah. But I'm not their marketing department. <laughs> I get the consistency with Spirit Christmas. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, personally. Will we see that in little mm -hmm. old Idaho Falls, Idaho? Time That's will tell. <laughs> we were joking about how Spirit Halloween packs up on November mm -hmm. 1st. I guess if they don't... Right. We'll know. You know, I have to assume that if there was a shop that was just like a holiday shop, but it just changed holidays every season for it, mm -hmm. it would do just fine. You, you know what you're describing? A brick and mortar retail version of the movie Holiday Inn. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Which I mean, for whatever odd reason we watched back in August or whatever that was. We did. That's true. It was. I think it was July, as a matter of fact. Because yeah. I was like, Mike, I swear, if, the, if you're tricking me into having Christmas in July, I'm going to be pissed. No, it wasn't. It's mm. not a Christmas movie. Nope. Yeah, we're mm. just fine. But we do need to watch the reimagining. Yeah, White Christmas. Slash sequel, not a sequel, White Christmas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the troll two of it all. <laughs> but we got to get to scary movies. One more thing, and then we'll get to scary movies. Okay. Do you like scary movies, Sydney? I do. Um, Who's Sydney? <laughs> <laughs> there, uh, there are a couple of tours when it comes to haunted tours in mm -hmm. Idaho Falls. Mm -hmm. There's the Museum of Idaho's Haunted History Tour. Which I have wanted tickets for for years now. <laughs> so <laughs> I looked on their website, and they have sort of a blog on the Museum of Idaho website saying, mm -hmm. okay... Haunted History Tour tickets go on sale to Museum of Idaho members. 
mm-hmm. um, before October 1st. Right. And then the general public on October 1st. Mm-hmm. And they were sold out on October 1st. Right. So, so. It, that either means all the members got the tickets mm-hmm. and only the members got the tickets or they had a few left over and they and were they swooped up. up. Yeah. So yeah, for next year, consider that. Right. Anyway, I realize as we've been sort of talking about this Rocky Mountain Horror Show segment, uh-huh. there is another ghost tour that happens. In fact, that's what it's called, the Ghost Walk. Yes. Ghostwalkidahofalls.com, link and post. Mm-hmm. You know they go from June through October? I did know that. As a matter of fact, I've actually been doing a little bit of research on the Ghost Walk, mostly because of the founder of it, Scott Bryan, who is a really big ghostologist in this area, whose books I've currently been reading through, by the way. Uh I haven't gotten very far, so don't ask me any questions yet. But I've actually kind of been wanting to get in contact with him because there's there's this bit that I want to do for the Rocky Mountain Horror Show that I can't find any info on. Oh, and I would think that, that he'd be the good. guy. Yeah. 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 I found, I found, okay, that's not Hey, totally Scott true. Brian, hit us up. Info yes, at <laughs> IFAF pod. I don't know how else I'm going to find any information on this, but literally I have found two people who know about it after I've asked like 20 people, mm-hmm. you know, and like one of them is the person who first told me about it. And then the other is some rando on the internet that I found once. (laughs) Okay. And no one had any information for him either. He was basically asking the same question I am. One of the rumors and myths. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. I know. I'm really excited about this one. So I really wish that someone could point me in the right direction. (laughs) If we can't get it this year, there's always next year. I guess so. But I don't want to make people wait that long. Just like Idaho Falls High School football. Okay. um, Mm -hmm. Anyway, Ghost Walk is a walking tour of downtown Idaho Falls. We talked yesterday or last episode about how Treasures mm-hmm. was a little haunted. Uh-huh. It's filled with Which, ghost stories. By the way, stories. so is my friend's Elsie, my friend's shop, Elsie's Closet. That's right. Also haunted. You've got a couple of good stories about that. I do. I do. And maybe we'll tell them on the show. I would love that as we get closer to Halloween. Yeah. Scary movies. There, oh yeah. I had a friend post. There's a and I, I don't follow her. Uh huh. But I had a friend post this gal. She's a SkyFitXX on Insta. Okay. She's a personal trainer for moms. She is herself oh, cool. a mother of four. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry, five. Oh, wow. <laughs> and every year she Does posts- Does she use the baby as the weight <laughs> to do her probably. reps? Probably. Then as the baby gets heavier, you get stronger. Uh-huh. Yeah. I knew somebody who had twins and I tried holding them both at the <sighs> same time. And after five minutes, I was like, take them. And this five foot four mm-hmm. mother was like, yeah, okay, you wuss. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's been doing that for nine months. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's done the training. <laughs> but every year, or at least for the past couple, and we've got the new list, she posts 31 days of Halloween on the different relevant streaming platforms. Oh, fun. Like Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Max, Peacock, Shutter, and Tubi. Okay, that being said, with five kids, how does she have the time? How? Yeah. I'm impressed. Maybe she gets them from a Reddit thread or something. Maybe. But she updated the list just in the last week. We've got it for mm-hmm. you here. In fact, we by the time this episode is out, we will have posted it on our Facebook, mm-hmm. facebook.com slash IFAF pod. Love that. Is where you can find it. And we'll do, we even do it in text form too. Mm-hmm. So that's seven different streaming platforms with 31 movies each. That's 217. That's a lot of movies. Scary movies. <laughs> Now, the one I've heard a lot of buzz about this year is Terrifier 3. Yes. That so, freaking clown. I've actually wanted to see that for a hot minute because mm-hmm. I kept seeing the the gif of the clown smiling. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that gif alone is super freaky. <laughs> Their first trailer, like the first one I think came out in 2019 and it yeah. said something like, um, makes uh, Pennywise look like Krusty. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for our spooky snack segment? I sure am. I picked these up just for you with you in mind. If you don't know, Carly's <laughs> really into white chocolate uh-huh. with fruit flavors. I, I am. It's true, honestly. Typically, that's why you love the Thor's chocolate <gasps> huckleberry, huckleberry cream one. so much. That yeah. one's so good. <laughs> She's been craving it. Oh, it's been terrible. I got to hit up Love at First Bite tomorrow because otherwise I'm going to lose it. <laughs> so anytime I see... Um, White chocolate, I think Uh of you. In this case, it's the Kit Kat Ghost Toast flavor. It's so cute. Which also, what a great idea. Crisp wafer in cinnamon toast flavored cream. 
That just sounds so good. Let's I love cinnamon dig toast. In. And yeah, I like any kind of like white chocolate with something on it. Mm-hmm. You know, so whether it's like a cinnamon toast type thing or if it's like white chocolate strawberry or something like that. But I just I love white chocolate. It's so good. And I suppose that's why they call it ghost. Yeah, right. Is because it's, it's white. white chocolate. But it's yeah. really orange. Look at these um Kit Kat fingers. Oh, here. they're so fun and festive. Mm-hmm. I like that. Also, I love Kit Kat's weird flavors. Which reminds me, yeah. I really need to go out and get one of their uh, pink lemonade ones before they're gone. Thanks to Kevin, we tried a mm-hmm. bunch of oh. Japanese flavor. They were the best. Flavors in an earlier episode. And World Market, if you make a stop in Salt Lake mm-hmm. City, say for your holiday shopping, they've got a bunch mm-hmm. too. Uh, this smells amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 I got a white chocolate crumb on me. This is delightful. This I- tastes like... You just had a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch, and now you're drinking the milk. It's exactly what it tastes like. Good mm-hmm. call. Mm-hmm. Mm. I did the rabbit mm. feed into my mouth, <laughs> and it was just so good. I saw that. Uh, those are delightful. Wow. My goodness. At the risk of um, creating boring content, I'm going to mm-hmm. do it again. I don't blame you. Well, and I love the shade of orange, too. Because <laughs> it's not too orange, but it still feels Halloweeny and festive. Mm. It's orange creamy. Yeah. Gosh, golly goodness. That and sure what a, is good. What a perfect flavor mm-hmm. for Kit Kat. I wonder if they have these in like, if you can buy these in bulk, because I would give these out for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't these be badass mm-hmm. to give away to kids? Oh, kids go nuts. It'd be absolutely feral. I can't remember which convenience store I picked these up at, mm-hmm. but these were the last two. Mm. And it was like a couple weeks ago. We got to find them again. I've been hanging on to them. Mm-hmm. This week, we went to the Wild Adventure Corn Maze. Mm -hmm. Now, we were just there for Sunflower Days. We sure were. And that was awfully fun, too. It was. Yeah. So they do it. Of course, this is their big event, Mm -hmm. is the Corn Maze. Yeah. Here's the terrible part. We didn't actually do the maze. No. We were stupid, and we got there a little late when it was already dark, and we were tired. and We We, we rode the little train. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, the little train was nice. Here's the thing. I love how like fun and kitschy their random little stuff is. Mm-hmm. You know, like the little um, barrel train that they do. Super cute. Super fun. I actually really enjoyed it. You know, it's just a nice, mild ride through the corn. Uh-huh. You know, and I really liked uh, their zip lines, too. Oh, here's yes. Daredevil Carly. She's doing the zip line. By the way, I wore a dress. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you have to wear a harness around your legs. <laughs> so we had to do a lot of tucking. <laughs> you, you made it work. I made it work. And here she is climbing the uh, rock climbing wall tower. Honestly, I love rock walls. So when I was a kid, we used to go to Blast Off, and I would basically be on that thing the entire time. <laughs> it was my favorite thing. You rang the bell at the top and everything. I sure did. I sure yeah. did. And I feel like I made it up pretty quick in heels, by the way. Yeah. Just saying, and a dress. It was so. impressive, but like you pointed out, it was a really fun carnival atmosphere. Right. Look at these food trucks that mm-hmm. they had. Yeah, which every other time I've been there, they've only ever had the one little shack, Mm -hmm. you know, the little barn that has the snacks. But now they had like some buddies, which I thought was cool. Uh, We got some of those sugared mousse donuts, which were just so delicious. So delicious. And you did. So at Haunted River, they had huckleberry donuts Uh with and you had a maple dip. So I did a so, little maple drizzle. Yeah. Uh-huh. And here you could choose what flavor. Mm-hmm. And you said, can I have two? <laughs> she said, sure. Yeah. Huckleberry and maple. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is a great combination. It's a great combo. And it feels like fall. Mm-hmm. You know? Because I feel like the maple just helps it feel a little bit more autumnal. Yes. Yeah. It was nice. It's it a was great really combo. Thank you. I'm very <laughs> pleased with myself. Uh, but yeah, those things are delicious. And I love their little donut machine. It's so cute. Yeah, you get to watch it. Yeah. It's right by the window so you can see the donuts come out of the oil, get flipped twice, uh-huh. and then boom into the basket. Yeah, it was delightful. Fun little experience. Very fun. The crazy corn, the crazy Always. corn with bacon. I will say, pretty darn good crazy corn. Mm-hmm. Sometimes some people don't know how to do crazy corn. These guys did pretty good. Yeah. We should have hit up some more of the the food stands, but we stupidly ate dinner before we went there because we thought there'd only be the one shack. So I guess that's part of our advice. Sometimes we're not smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you go to the Wild Adventure yeah. Corn Maze, go hungry. Yeah. Plan to eat when you get there. Uh-huh. Especially because I've heard that their hamburger in their little snack shack is like primo. Mm-hmm. So give that a go, I guess. JoLynn Thomas, who we ran into from yes. KID News uh-huh. Radio, uh, tipped us, clued us into that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So, you know. 
Just saying, go there hungry. And yes, she's listened to this show. Oh, I love that. She didn't say she liked it, but she, no, she did actually. <laughs> I love Jolyn. She's so great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's one of my favorites and she always dresses so nice. She is a snappy, snappy dresser. She really is. Yeah. Yeah. Even when going through a corn maze. Yeah. Right. I love that about her. I think that the ideal way to enjoy this maze is you go there hungry, you stop at the snack shacks first, and then you eat your snack as you try to figure out the maze. There you go. Yeah. Go get some uh, food and even some greasy food mm -hmm. and then walk it off. Yeah. I love it. Oh, there's a coupon on their website. Save $2 off an adult admission, $1 off a kid's admission. Oh, I love that. Nice. And then for the spooky segment. Yes. So I'm really excited about this. We went to Rose Hill Cemetery. We sure did. And there are some, so this is one of my favorite ones that we've done so far, which it's one of two, but but the thing that I like about this is that there are so many little urban legends around it. Mm -hmm. There's not really a lot of it, like true hard fact, but I think that's what makes it kind of fun. Well, let's start with the two that I think everybody knows. Yes. There are two graves mm -hmm. side by side. One that says where, uh -huh. one that says wolf. Yes. <laughs> W-U-L-F. <laughs> right, right. And they're right next to each other in yeah. that order. Yeah, which I think is super funny and cute. I have to assume that one of the families was buried there first, and the second one was trying to choose a plot, and they're like, that'd be funny, and they chose that one. Probably. <laughs> right? Sounds like something you'd do just for the joke. It totally is. It absolutely is. <laughs> like if there was somebody with the last name Captain. Captain, yeah. You would. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely would. I, I Can would I find have that a plot so next funny. to theirs? <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, so I actually thought that was kind of an interesting one. There are a couple of stories around that. There's one that basically says something along the lines of the families knew that there was a werewolf buried there and specifically chose that plot. Mm. The dates don't really make sense on that because they died uh, pretty far apart. So I don't think there was much colluding going on between them. Uh, there is also a, a werewolf spirit that people have sort of said haunts the graveyard. Okay. I think that seems a little far-fetched. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but yeah, basically that's sort of the joke. Uh, I also saw that some, like in some of the recountings of it on the internet, they say that there's a big chunk taken out of the wolf tombstone. There's not. Okay. Nope. Basically making it sound like there was a big old werewolf bite in it. And then the knocking you know. grave. Now, that one I thought was really interesting. This one you, you can't really miss. It's the big it's sort a big of mausoleum-like mausoleum mm -hmm. or, or, or mini-leum. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a tomb, at least, of some sort. Grave. And what's the name on it? <laughs> uh, so the name on it is Rogers. The second name on it being Logan. Now, this one I thought was really interesting, and I've actually got quite a bit of info on this. Okay. Now, those who are locals of the area might recognize the name Rogers from the Rogers Hotel in Historic Downtown. That's right. Funny thing is, when we were at Newly the grave renovated. today, yes, mm -hmm. when we were at the grave today, my friend who was with us, Natalie, my ghost expert, she said, I wonder if that's related to the Rogers building. Her intuition was absolutely right, and it is. That is actually the grave of B.M. Brunt Rogers, who was one of Idaho Falls' first millionaires, and he would often stand to look at his hotel, which was built in 1937 for $300,000. It had 100 beautifully furnished rooms with baths for $2 and up. Wow, and you mentioned Natalie. She is from Elsie's Closet. Yes. Mentioned her before. Talk about them a lot on this show. Pink sign just off A Street. Mm -hmm. Elsie's Closet. She also has some haunted stories. From her shop, yeah. About that place. She's also a bit of a downtown history buff, so mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me at all that that's where her mind went, and I'm so glad it did. Wow. Because it was such a neat little... Uh, rabbit hole to go down well and, um, and you'll see another name um and there's okay the old part of rose hill cemetery is actually in as far as you can go uh -huh. it's right it's adjacent to totfus park right we saw totfus yes is buried there and i don't know his first name probably skyler <laughs> probably or braxton <laughs> with a y something like that <laughs> but, yeah he's there's yeah. a it's a cross and it just says totfus uh-huh across it but anyway, finishing up with our good buddy, um, Bronson Marshall Brunt Rogers. So I actually found this on find, findagrave.com, which is fascinating to know that that exists. Yes. Uh, but anyway, so he was born uh, the 10th of August in 1871 in New York, which makes sense that he came here and built a big old hotel because he's like, oh, it reminds me of home. He died in... Uh, February 16th of 1955. Wow. Which is pretty impressive. That's a good he, run, buddy. He was 83. 
Yeah. Uh, it says here that he's an entrepreneur. He had no children of his own, but his wife, Fanny, is the Logan that's referred to on the tomb. So you'll see Fanny Rogers. Logan. Logan. Uh-huh. And then she also had a daughter that he raised as well, which and, is pretty cool. And the rumor is this is the knocking grave. You knock on it. Yes. And it's kind of unfortunate because it looks like there there's some uh, ironwork and there mm-hmm. were glass plates behind it. Right. That they've, they've been smashed, clearly. Smashed since then, yeah. Yeah, which... The Dudes, rumor is on. you knock and it knocks back. Right, right. Well, we knocked. It didn't knock back. It did not. Now, I actually did want to touch on that, though, because I did find a comment on one of the websites that I visited. I wish I would have written it down, but it was by uh, Jackal J, and he said that he's experienced the knocking tomb, scared the bejeebers out of me, uh, came back the next day and discovered it was a loose panel, but the effect is very real. Sounds like someone knocks after you do. Wow. So there might be a logical explanation after all. Crazy. I know. Isn't that fun? And I wonder if they fixed it. They've got a what appears to be too. a brand new padlock on it. And look at right. this shot. There's also coins. There are. On the uh, sort of sill. Mm-hmm. Uh, of the mausoleum. Yes. Yeah. Now that actually we researched a little bit at the cemetery as well. Well, so it's funny because Carly said, I think it has something to do with um, paying the ferryman, paying the ferryman across mm-hmm. the river sticks. Yeah. And I said, no, I think it has something to do with soldiers. We were both right. Right. Yeah. Here's what we found out. The tradition dates back to the Roman empire. Uh huh. <laughs> Twice in one episode. I know. Came right back to it. Didn't it? <laughs> they play. Is it Charon or Karin? Is it Charon, uh, the ferryman of Hades? Oh, yeah. To transport them across the river Styx it's into the Karen. afterlife? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> if the ferryman was a Karen? <laughs> yeah. The Karenman? <laughs> I'm sorry, anyway. but you have tattoos. <laughs> I can't take you across. Right. <laughs> but the Roman soldiers would place a coin in the mouth of the deceased mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, pay their toll. And then coins left on a gravesite in the U.S. anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, the practice became popular during the Vietnam War as a way to pay respects without getting into uncomfortable political discussions about the war. Right. The denomination of the coin sort of left a message like if you left a penny, you visited the grave. Mm-hmm. If you left a nickel, you trained with the person at boot camp. If you left a dime, you served with them. And if you left a quarter, you were there when they passed away. Right. And speaking of wartime Mm -hmm. and the old part of the cemetery, again, up the hill, Mm -hmm. what I imagine is Rose Hill. Right. (laughs) um, There's a couple of – I've been to Arlington National Cemetery. Yes. Near D.C. And there's a couple of Arlington-looking tombstones there. Yes, I did see those. They're both members of the same family. Mm -hmm. And it looks like one was from World War I. One was from World War II. Is that a father and son, I wonder? That's what you have to wonder, right? But that was kind of cool. And Mm -hmm. I know it's a little late, but thank you for your service. (laughs) Right. And I think some cemeteries collect the coins from the grave sites and use the money for cemetery maintenance, burial costs, or care for indigent soldiers. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, that's a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. Back to our myths, though, we've got two more lesser known ones, and those are the ones I'm kind of more excited about because I want to hear if anyone else has any stories on these. Yes. Um, So one I heard of is a ghost girl. I heard it in passing forever ago. I couldn't find hardly anything on the internet about it except for one comment that basically said that there's rumored to be a ghost girl that haunts the mausoleum, and she will say hello, or she'll say hi if you say hello upon entering. Obviously, you can't enter the mausoleum anymore, so that's sort of a moot point. But I've heard that she still wanders around there, but she's definitely not as big of a ghost as some of the others. Another one that we both stumbled across that I thought was really neat is an entity called K.A. The Demon of Mm. Rose Hill Cemetery. Don't have the commenter's (laughs) name, Mm -hmm. but he said, what actually haunts this cemetery is way worse than a werewolf or a grave that knocks back. Mm -hmm. It's an evil entity by the name of K.A. lurking in the lower level of the cemetery. Uh So the newer stuff. Whenever I'm there with friends, I usually get a lot of activity whenever I ask questions about him. Interesting. The other spirits of the cemetery are afraid of him, and even the fellow spirits I've gotten to know. This is where it kind of falls apart for me. Oh, really, buddy? (laughs) But maybe. I understand that different people are more Mm -hmm. in tune with that than others. Mm Mm-hmm. Different spirits I've gotten to know have refused to do something because it was against K.A. He's something to not be feared, but he is not someone you want to challenge. He's attacked me while I've slept. Terrifying. (laughs) Did I read that right? Something to not be feared. 
but he's attacked me while I've slept. That sounds pretty scary, bro. I mean, I would be afraid. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> he choked me when I've entered the cemetery. And he's not friendly toward visitors. Again, not be feared. Like, so we're in I the would cemetery. Be of anyone who went for my throat, especially someone I couldn't see. And I'm I'm calling out Ka's name, mm-hmm. and nothing happened. I didn't choke up or or uh, <laughs> or anything. Thankfully, seize up. Well, we did also go go during the daytime. So the scariest thing to me while we were there was: Did we happen to walk by a grave that appeared to be exhumed? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely did. I, I don't know exactly what the story is it yet. Three, it had three plywood boards on it and an orange <laughs> cone. Mm-hmm. So it was just a little bit, um, there was a little crack in the front of it. So you could actually look down into it. And it was definitely an open grave. And there was a little bit of evidence at the front that there was a tombstone there before too. Yes, I saw that. And that it looks yeah. like the sod had been replaced. So right. I, I don't know under what circumstances you would, I mean, unless there was a forensic investigation or something. Right, right. But, uh, and, and even remove the tombstone. Like, don't you pay for the plot before you kick it? Usually, yeah. yeah. I, I would think that the only real reason you might want to do that would be if maybe someone in your family got buried there and you didn't have the money to buy the surrounding plots and other people bought them, but you still wanted that person to be with the rest of the family. There you go. So, you know, okay. once yeah, you got would... the other plots for everyone else, you'd move them. Be reasonable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there was totally an open grave, and it was super spooky and gave us the chills. And Mike did download a random EMF meter on his phone, which I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that you can actually I don't detect think electromagnetic fields with an iPhone. Has that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was any, it ranged anywhere from 30 to 50 until I got in the car, and it went to like 300. <laughs> right, which was weird. <laughs> uh, but also it did. Maybe my car is haunted, Carly. <laughs> well, I mean, it is a little older. It could be. <laughs> I'm the original owner, though. No one's died in it, as far as I know. <laughs> I would say, too. Uh, it did also beep a little bit around that open grave. That's true, it so did. So that's a little spooky. And we walked by it like two or three times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it did it a couple of times, too, which I thought was weird. You know, uh, what's funny is we saw a couple of people walking uh-huh. their dogs there. Yeah. Yeah, and as a, matter, as a matter of fact, my friend Natalie likes to walk her dogs there. And I never really thought about it, but yeah, I, I guess back in the day, yeah, before Totfus died and <laughs> deeded the land for the park, right, I guess, right. people would go through cemeteries at night, you know, well-groomed grounds. And- right. It was actually really common for cemeteries to be used as parks. Matter of fact, Mary Shelley, author of Frankenstein, learned how to write by tracing the letters on her mother's grave. And if that isn't goth, I don't know what is. <laughs> You know who would love this is Nora Hayde from... uh, I bet she would. BSU Women's (laughs) Beach Volleyball. Well, that's our show. (laughs) Thanks so much for listening and uh, getting the shivers a little bit with us. Mm -hmm. And don't say (laughs) K-A. I will say... Whatever you do. One last thing about it. We didn't have any personal stories from Rose Hill Cemetery. So if you've got one, please leave it in the comments because we would love to hear some real live stories about the spooky stuff that's happened to you. Also in this post, uh, link to subscribe on YouTube. Enjoy your week. We'll see you next time with more Rocky Mountain Horror Show. (laughs) 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 Don't kill yourself. Stay fresh cheese bags. (laughs) 